Breaking news! There's been some news recently that has gotten the web talking, but before we dive into today's big news, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe so you never miss out on the latest team updates. Let's go! Alright, Falcons Nation, let's talk quarterbacks. Just when we thought the Falcons had Kirk Cousins and Michael Penix under center, the team has added a new name to the mix. Yes, you heard that right, Nathan Peterman is joining the Falcons practice squad. Now, I know what some of you might be thinking, why Nathan Peterman? First, let's address the situation that led to this signing. The Falcons had recently traded Taylor Heineke and decided not to bring back undrafted free agent John Paddock, leaving Cousins and Penix as the only quarterbacks on the active roster. While this could be a sign that Cousins is in great shape and ready to lead the team, it's always risky to go into a season without a third quarterback as insurance. The Falcons had to bring someone in, and now we know that someone is Nathan Peterman. For those who may not be familiar, Nathan Peterman, 30, is a quarterback who has had stints with the Buffalo Bills, Oakland Raiders, and Chicago Bears. He's best known for his rocky start with the Bills, where he appeared in eight games, started four, and threw three touchdowns against a whopping 12 interceptions. It's safe to say his early career wasn't exactly the stuff of highlight reels. However, Peterman has bounced around the league since then, gaining experience and seemingly improving his game, albeit modestly. In 2022, during his time with the Bears, he had a more respectable performance, completing 14 of 25 passes for 139 yards with one touchdown and one interception in limited action. It's a far cry from his early struggles, but it does show some growth. So why did the Falcons draft Peterman? Well, with 15 games and 5 starts under his belt for various teams, Peterman brings a certain level of experience to the table. He may not be a star quarterback, but he has been through a lot, and that is valuable for a backup QB who may never see regular season action. Additionally, it appears that the Falcons were impressed with what they saw from Peterman during his preseason run with the Las Vegas Raiders. While he is not expected to be a game-changer, the team likely values his experience and believes he can step in as an emergency option if needed. Of course, the hope is that Peterman never has to see the field during a regular season game. If he does, it would likely mean something went terribly wrong with Cousins or Penix, which is the last thing any of us want to see. In a corresponding move to make room for Peterman, the Falcons released depth tackle Julian Davenport. This suggests that the team is comfortable with its current offensive line depth, with guys like Andrew Stuber or Elijah Wilkinson available to step up from the practice squad if needed. And don't forget, the Falcons have Storm Norton as their swing tackle on the active roster, backing up Jake Matthews and Caleb McGarry. So what does this mean for the Falcons going forward? For now, Peterman will be waiting in the wings, ready to step up if the team needs him. Whether or not he makes an impact remains to be seen, but for now, it's all about being prepared for any situation. Now, I want to hear from you, Falcons fans. What do you think of the signing of Nathan Peterman? Is he a solid insurance policy, or are you concerned about his past performances? All right, the wait is over. The Atlanta Falcons have just released their first official depth chart for the regular season, and while there aren't many surprises, there are a few key takeaways that we need to discuss as we prepare for week one against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Let's start with the defense, where we have some interesting developments. Justin Simmons, our big offseason acquisition, makes his official debut on the depth chart as the starting safety alongside Bates. This duo should bring some serious firepower to our secondary, and it's a sign that the Falcons are all about shoring up this backfield defense. Our rookies are also making waves. Rook and Casey Washington have both secured spots as immediate backups at their respective positions. These guys have shown flashes of brilliance during the preseason, and they'll be key contributors on special teams right away. Meanwhile, Brandon Dorless and Jace McClellan are a little lower on the depth chart, but given the depth at their respective positions, that's no surprise. Still, keep an eye on them as the season progresses. On the edge, Matthew Juden and Lorenzo Carter are locked in as our starting outside linebackers. However, don't be surprised if you see a healthy dose of Arnold rotating with Juden, especially in passing situations. Ebba Kitty has been a force throughout the preseason, and his speed on the edge could be a game-changer. At inside linebacker, Troy Anderson will once again start alongside Ellis. Anderson has been solid throughout the preseason, holding down the starting spot while Nate Landman recovers from a quadriceps injury. Landman will still play a crucial role, especially in run-stopping situations. In the secondary, 
Mike Hughes has secured the starting cornerback spot opposite Terrell, making him the fifth different cornerback to start opposite Terrell in the last five seasons. Hughes has shown consistency and playmaking ability, and pairing him with Terrell gives us a dynamic duo that could be the backbone of our defense this season. The biggest surprise comes on special teams. While many expected Ray Ray to take over the return duties alongside Avery Williams, it is actually Hughes who is listed for that role. Hughes is excelling not only as a starting corner, but also as a key player on special teams. This dual role highlights his versatility and the confidence the coaching staff has in him. Now tell me, what did you think of our week one depth chart? Switching gears, analysts have released what the Falcons' biggest concern and biggest advantage is in 2024, so let's break down what they're saying. First, let's talk about defense. We all know the Falcons made some big moves in the offseason, bringing in Matthew Juden and Justin Simmons to bolster a defense that desperately needed help. According to analysts, these additions were a significant step forward. Prior to these signings, the team had the Falcons ranked dead last in their defensive projections. With Juden and Simmons in the mix, Atlanta's defense jumped several spots into the low 20s, not stellar, but certainly an improvement. But according to experts, they're not entirely convinced that these defensive reinforcements will be enough to carry the team. They're particularly skeptical about Kirk Cousins' ability to recover from his Achilles injury and lead this team effectively. In their simulations, Cousins didn't rank favorably. This statistic suggests that quarterbacks coming back from major injuries, like Cousins, typically don't perform as well as those who stayed healthy the year before. They pointed out that even if Cousins is just average this season, it would still be an improvement over what we had last year. Now, let's move on to some good news. According to what's been reported, the Falcons have the easiest projected schedule in the entire NFL this year. It doesn't matter if we play the tough games early or late, the overall schedule is so soft that it could help us make the postseason. The Chargers, Raiders, and Broncos aren't expected to be as formidable as conventional wisdom suggests, which bodes well for the Falcons as we look to rack up some wins. So what's the takeaway from the analysts? They believe that better coaching, better quarterback play, even if it's just average, and defensive upgrades should help the Falcons navigate what's being called the easiest schedule in the league. But let's not kid ourselves. Just because the schedule is easy doesn't mean the games will be. The Falcons need to take care of business week in and week out. After all, nothing has ever been easy for a Falcons fan, right? While there's reason for cautious optimism, there's also a lot of work to be done. Cousins needs to step up and the Falcons need to capitalize on this soft schedule if we're going to make any noise this season. Now, I want to hear from you. What do you think about the analysis behind our biggest concerns and advantages this season? Leave your comments below. I look forward to hearing your thoughts. And don't forget to hit the like button, share with your fellow Falcons fans, and subscribe to the channel for more news as we navigate the 2024 season. Let's rise up and make this year one to remember. Go Falcons!